Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Amin El Ahmad with Texas Cardiac Arrhythmia in Austin, Texas. Case is titled Pacemaker Patient with Palpitations. What is the cause? Okay, we start our case with the patient history. Now, this is a 74 year old with a history of sinus node dysfunction. He has a history of intermittent AV block, and he had a permanent pacemaker placed about six years ago. He complains of one episode of dizziness. So uh, as far as the symptoms go, they were brief. There was no loss of consciousness, and he was sitting down during the episode. There was no change in medications, and he didn't have any prodromal uh, syndrome or symptoms that suggested he was going to have an episode of dizziness. As I mentioned before, his past medical history is a pacemaker placed, has a history of high blood pressure, but no history of any arrhythmias at all. So what's our next step in this case? Do we reassure the patient? Should we give him a Holter monitor? Do we bring him in for a device check or a stress test and an echo? So obviously this is an EP case and we have a pacemaker in, which may yield some important information. So of course a device check is the next step in this uh, patient's care. So here are the details of the device. It's a Medtronic device. It's an Advisa DR. It has uh, two leads, an atrial and a ventricular lead. They're Medtronic 5076 leads. The lower rate is set at 60 beats a minute. The upper rate is set at 130, um, and the upper sensor is 145. The AV delay is 150 uh, to 180 milliseconds uh, sensed the paste. And atrial ATP, which is uh, uh, turned on in this patient despite him not having a history of atrial arrhythmias, um, is, uh, is one of the other findings. When we look at the um, episode that caused the symptoms, this uh, correlated exactly with the time that the patient had um, symptoms. It appears that there was some uh, atrial ATP that was delivered, and that atrial ATP uh, appeared to stimulate the ventricle. And so that's uh, exactly when the patient had these symptoms. And you can look here at the plot. Um, same thing, you can see when ATP is delivered, both the atrium and the ventricle accelerate, at least it appears to accelerate. A closer look, again, you can see the atrial EGM on the top, ventricular EGM on the bottom, and you can see the atrium seems to accelerate the ventricle. So why did this happen? What are the potential explanations for this? And what do we do as far as troubleshooting this kind of device abnormality? So is it possible that we're able to conduct, in other words, pace in the atrium rapidly and conduct to the ventricle using the native AV node? That would be a little bit difficult because we'd need to be conducting at about 300 beats a minute, which is the speed of this, uh, the pacing. It's not likely because the patient does have AV node disease. Remember, uh, when we presented the case, um, the patient does have intermittent AV blocks. So this would be a little bit of a challenge for that to be the possible cause, but it is a possible explanation nonetheless, not likely. Could it be a lead dislodgement? And this may make sense. Let's say that the atrial lead uh, has dislodged and is now in the ventricle. And so stimulation of the atrial lead, um, it, you know, atrial ATP may cause rapid ventricular pacing. So the way to answer this question is uh, simply by looking at a chest X-ray. And you can see here a chest X-ray marked in red is where the atrial lead is. It's nowhere close to where the ventricle is. And so clearly not the cause. What other possibilities? Well, maybe the atrial lead is located in a location close to the ventricle. Uh, for example, it's really close to the right atrial appendage, uh, really close to ventricular tissue, close to the annulus, but that's not the case on the, uh, on the chest x-ray. The chest x-ray really looks like it's far away from uh, any ventricular tissue. What else could it be? Maybe this is just artifact. Maybe this is not real. Uh, maybe I'm just showing you this and it's just some type of artifact or maybe some type of, uh, um, you know, electricity that, that uh, appears to, to show up on the lead but isn't really stimulating the ventricle. 
but if this is really artifact, why did the patient say that they were having symptoms? So we really need, really need to look in a little bit closer for this. What if there's some type of strange electrical connection between the leads? For example, a lead problem or a header problem where somehow it short circuits. And is there a way to test this in the office? Can we do some type of testing for this kind of, uh, to, to see if this is a, a real issue or not? In this case, uh, obviously, we're going to do some device testing. And in this case, there was normal lead thresholds, normal sensing, and normal impedance. So essentially unchanged from before. We tried to recreate ventricular stimulation. Uh, we paced high output in the atrium, uh, both unipolar and bipolar uh, modalities, and didn't really see anything. We also did pocket manipulation, and we didn't really see anything with that. either. So what's our next step and what programming changes should be made? So we can turn off uh, atrial tachycardia pacing, which actually would be reasonable because remember the patient doesn't have a history of atrial arrhythmias. We can program the patient to uh, VVI. We can program to DDI, or we can program to AAI. In this case, the obvious answer is just turn off the atrial ATP. What else should we consider doing? Well, you may consider a lead revision, uh, just do the reprogramming in the clinic. You can do no other changes, or you can do further diagnostic uh, testing in this case. So we opted to actually go ahead and do a lead revision on this patient because we were very concerned that there may be a lead abnormality. And this is what we found when we did the lead revision. We found that there was an area on the lead and you could actually measure exactly where on the lead it was and, on the, on, and, and correlate that with on where it is on the chest X-ray <clears throat> on both the atrial and the ventricular lead um, where there's a little bit of an erosion of, of the lead insulation. And it appeared that this correlated to where the leads were overlapped. In other words, that insulation was eroded and those two two leads were essentially on top of each other in that location. And that may end up causing the conductor from the atrial and the conductor from the ventricular wires to touch each other, which would lead essentially to a short circuit or essentially to where stimulation, the atrial lead would, would go into the, uh, would, would, would pass electricity in the ventricular wire. We sent the leads intact uh, after they were removed. Both leads were extracted from the body. A new pacing system was placed. Uh, we sent those leads uh, to the manufacturer, Medtronic in this case, and they were able to do analysis of the leads for us. And you can see um, they did uh, high resolution photographs magnified with, uh, with this dye that clearly shows that not only is there a slight lead fracture, but in addition to that, there's an insulation breach, and that insulation breach on the atrial and on the ventricular lead are in the exact same location. In other words, the metal on the two leads is touching. So now when we take a look at this, it makes a little bit more sense. Now you can see um, that in the uh, electrogram, that the atrial electrogram was not actually in a fib. And so the atrial channel simply recorded episodes of noise. And that atrial noise resulted in a false detection of atrial fibrillation. That false detection of atrial fibrillation resulted in a therapy delivered, which was the atrial ATP. So uh, lead noise related to the insulation breach um, triggered atrial ATP. And it just so happened that because those two leads are sitting right on top of each other, where, that, where, they're, where they're essentially in connection uh, electrically, that the electrical stimulation, the atrial lead, passed through the ventricular lead and stimulated the ventricular lead simultaneously. Um, resulting in a very rapid ventricular rate. So either way, even if we turned off atrial ATP, both of these leads were headed for a uh, need for a lead repair or replacement. Interestingly, uh, after atrial ATP is delivered, it actually does put the patient into, into an atrial arrhythmia. 
So uh, HOAP not being uh, a very benign thing in this, in this situation. So this sort of summarizes what happened. Lead insulation breach of the atrial and the ventricular lead. Lead noise due to insulation breach is misclassified as atrial fibrillation. Device treats the atrial fibrillation with atrial ATP. The, the atrial and ventricular electrodes are in contact. They create a short circuit. ATP delivered to the atrial lead conducts via the ventricular electrode, stimulates the ventricle at the atrial ATP rate. So this rapid ventricular stimulation, about 300 beats a minute, causes the dizzy spell. So the next question is what caused that insulation breach? And so it turns out that the, this particular lead, the Medtronic uh, 5076, is a silicone coated lead. And so one of the properties of silicone known as cold flow or creep is the time dependent thinning of the silicone related to a constant compressive load. And so in this case, the two wires were sitting on top of each other and they were, they were in a place where they were essentially pushing on each other. And because of that, the silicone thinned out in that area, resulting in, uh, in the short circuit. So this phenomena with time leads to loss of insulation integrity at the point of contact and the point of pressure between the two leads. And that was the, uh, the reason the patient had the uh, insulation breach and therefore all of the other issues. Fortunately, the patient's been doing uh, really well with the new pacemaker. It's not having any more issues. So I wanted to share that case. And of course, I'm happy to uh, take any questions uh, uh, or hear any feedback from it. Thank you so much.